In this example problem, we're going to calculate the nominal flexural strength of the rectangular section that's shown below using the ACI 318 procedure. We're given some information about the section, the width, the height, the depth of the strands, and some information on the number of strands and size of strands. So we find the total area of our pre-stressing, just six half inch diameter strands, and uh, we have some other information, uh, grade 270 strands, uh, KSI strands, and five KSI concrete. Our first step is we're going to use the ACI 318 equation for calculating the stress in the pre-stressing strand at uh, nominal strength. And we're going to use this equation shown here. Note that we don't have any non-pre-stress reinforcement. So our rho is equal to rho prime equal to zero. So in this case, the above equation is going to simplify to this equation shown here. We need to figure out some of our factors and our first factor is this gamma sub p factor. And this factor is, takes into account the type of pre-stressing that we have. Typical, reinforce, or typical pre stress reinforcement is going to have a yield strength about equal to about equal to 90% of the ultimate strength, so about equal to 243 KSI. So if we take that 243 divided by 270, we'll get a, a ratio here of 0.9 and a gamma factor of 0.28. We will continue the example by calculating some of the other values that we need for our F sub PS equation. The next one that we'll need is our pre-stressing ratio. For this, we have our total pre-stress area, 0 0.918 inches squared, divided by our beam width, 12 inches, times the depth of our strands, 22 inches, which will give us a ratio here of 0 0.00348. Next, we need our beta one factor, and our beta one factor is just going to be equal to 0.85 minus 0.05 times 5 KSI minus four, which will be equal to 0.8. This is greater than or equal to the lower limit, 0.65, so we're going to use 0.8 in our equations. We can then plug in all these values to calculate our F sub PS. And we'll get an F sub PS equal to 270 KSI times one minus 0.28 divided by 0.8 times 0 0.00348 times 270 KSI divided by 5 KSI. We'll close our bracket here and we'll get a value here of 252 KSI. So this is the stress in our strands uh, at, the, at the nominal flexural strength of our section. With this value now, we can calculate the rectangular, rectangular stress block depth using equilibrium. And for this, we'll need our strain diagram and our stress and force diagram. You can see that the depth of our neutral axis, point of zero strain is going to be C, and we're assuming a rectangular stress distribution uh, in our concrete and compression uh, with a depth equal to A uh, equal to beta one times C. So we have uh, our A value times 0.85 F prime C times the width of our section gives us our compression force. And our tension force is going to just be from our pre-stressing, which will be A sub P times F sub PS. We don't have any external applied axial load, so we can set our compression equal to tension. So again, our compression force from our rectangular stress block equal to the tension force from our pre-stressing. And we can solve for A, the compression block depth, because that's the only unknown. So our A here is going to be equal to our total pre-stress area, 0.918 square inches times 
that stress in the strand that we found on the previous slide, and then all this divided by 0.85 times 12 inches times 5 KSI, which will give us an A here of 4.54 inches. Our neutral axis depth we can find by taking that 4.54 inches divided by beta 1.8, which will give us a, a C here of 5.7 inches. Next, we can calculate our nominal moment, and we'll do this by summing moments about the centroid of our rectangular, rectangular stress block. So we have one force, our A, P sub F, P, S, times the distance between the centroid of that block and the uh, centroid of our strands, which will be dp minus a over 2. So plugging our values, we'll have m sub n equal to 0 0.918 square inches times 252 ksi times 22 inches minus our A 4.54 divided by 2. And that'll give us our nominal moment here of 4,565 kip inches. So that's our, our nominal moment and our compression block depth and our neutral axis depth. Next, we can check the strain in our pre-stressing steel. And we'll do this by looking at our strain diagram. We assume that we have a linear strain distribution across the depth of the section. We know, or we're assuming that the top fiber strain is equal to 0 0.003, which is an, an assumption specified by ACI. And we know the neutral axis depth. And from that, we know that this distance here is just going to be d sub p minus c. So with this, we have similar triangles, and we can set up a ratio and solve for the strain at the centroid of our pre-stressing. So plugging in our values here, we'll get our strain at the centroid of our pre-stressing equal to 0 0.003 times 22 inches minus 5.7 inches, which is c, divided by 5.7 which will give us a strain here equal to 0 0.0086. This is the value that we're going to compare against our tension control limit from ACI. So we can find our tension control limit from the two tables that I, I give us here. Uh, we have our, our tension control limit here, and it's equal to the epsilon t sub y plus 0 0.003. So here we have uh, our epsilon t sub y defined in ACI as 0 0.002 for all pre-stress reinforcement. So 0 0.002 plus 0 0.003 gives us our tension controlled strain of 0 0.005. We can compare the strain that we found, 0 0.0086, to that limit and see that our set section is tension controlled. So we're going to use a phi factor of 0 0.9. We can take our phi of 0 0.9 times mn, 4,565 kip inches, to get phi mn equal to 4,109 kip inches. This is our factored nominal moan capacity. I don't give us any information on our loads or loading, but our design objective for flexural strength is to ensure that phi mn is greater than or equal to m sub u along the entire length of the member. That concludes this design example.